Hello, I'm Professor Olivier Pons from the Jean Alexandre Dieudonné Laboratory uh, in uh, Côte d'Azur University, France. And I would like to present you a grant work with Grégoire Lair, Pearl Geoffroy, and Karim Trabelsi about shape optimization for additive manufacturing and a particular method called the, the homogenization method. So, special thanks to the organizers and in particular to um, Frédéric Echt and uh, Frédéric Meta for giving me the opportunity pre to present this work. Uh, I'm going to present you during this work different simulations, different results of simulations. All of them have been made using FreeFM++, which is a free software that you can download for free and use for free at freefem.org. So let's start with a little bit of uh, motivation about this work. So I would like to present you what shape optimization is and what we are trying to achieve here. Uh, okay. So we are going to consider as the simplest in some way uh, shape optimization problem in uh, structural optimization. So for instance, imagine that you want to, uh, uh, you need an elastic shape uh, that should sustain the load F here on the uh, right hand side of the screen. Uh, while it's clamped on a um, part of a wall on the left-hand side, represented in yellow here. So what you want is the shape to be uh, stiff enough in order to sustain the applied load, or the applied loads, and uh, also that is the lightest that you possible. Okay, um, in a lot of application, for instance, in a aerospace uh, application, obviously you want uh, to save some weight, and you also want to save some weight um, most of the time because it is less costly and you use less material. Okay, so what is the best shape in order to achieve this goal? So say. Uh, exists uh, several methods in order to do so. So I will talk a little bit about it, and then we are going to talk about the, the homogenization method. So one popular method is what is called the level set method. So I will not enter into these details, but the idea is that you start with a shape with several holes in it, like the one represented on the screen. And uh, we are going to perform a uh, gradient descent method. Uh, our cost function uh, is what is called the compliance. So the lower the compliance is, the stiffer your shape uh, gonna be. And uh, under a volume constraint. So you do not want to use uh, more material than a given threshold. And uh, the level set method uh, is a shape optimization method based on the computation of what is called the shape gradient. Meaning that you are going to, we can compute uh, the variation of the compliance when we do apply some small perturbations uh, at the boundary of the shape. So we found a perturbation that do lower at a given step that do lower the compliance. We applied uh, the, so small perturbation at the boundary of the shape, and we go on like this. So the so level set method is uh, known as a geometric method of shape optimization. And the advantage of the level set method with respect to more classical methods uh, is that you do not really have to care about the topology of the shape, meaning that if um, holes do merge, it's not a problem. Whereas if you are using more classical methods, that is, if the mesh does follow the shape, you could have some tiny problem when uh, the topology of the mesh 
change. Okay, so let's see what we obtain. So I recall you all those simulations have been obtained using Freeframe Plus Plus and have been made on a very, very standard computer. We are not using here a huge server with uh, thousands of uh, CPU or GPU, uh, nothing fancy here. All right, so this is one method. Another method is, which is probably more popular in the uh, industrial uh, um, context is what is called the SIMP method. So the idea here is not to use a shape gradient method in order to apply our gradient step method, but rather to, uh, count to extend the definition of the compliance to some kind of virtual material. So you assume that basically the density of material into your optimization domain could take values between zero and one. So zero is no material and one is full material. And uh, in order to obtain a genuine shape at the end, uh, what you do is during the competition, you penalize intermediate densities between zero and one. And at the end, as you can see, you obtain a genuine shape, uh, well-defined, and it looks very like the previous ones that we obtained using the level set method. So uh, it's reasonable to think that it is more or less correct. Uh, well, but the problem here is that in fact, neither of the shapes are optimal. We can do better. And we can do better by adding more holes than the results obtained here. And the more holes you add, the better shape you can obtain, the more optimal shape you can obtain. And this is reason natural. Why? Because it is, uh, if we have a limited number of holes, we cannot create composite shapes. And optimal shapes are composite shapes, meaning that they are made of very, very small macrostructures in your shapes, like the one represented here, and that have been obtained using three, uh, 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 3D printer. And uh, moreover, now that the, uh, three uh, D printers have evolved so much that uh, they are almost rarely available to anyone. Uh, you can obtain very, very uh, complicated designs using three D printed um, method of manufacturing. So this is one example of a three D printed shape, and as you can see, it is made of load and load of uh, very tiny details. So they're all the same here. There's a macrostructure, so it defines what is called a composite shape, but it raises several problems. So the first problem is uh, even if, without considering the optimization problem, if you want for such a shape to predict what will be its behavior under certain conditions, it is very, very hard to do. Well, it's not completely impossible, probably, for the shape, but on a standard laptop, you will not be able to uh, compute the uh, stress, for instance, in the shape. So it's, the direct problem is hard. And obviously, if the direct problem is hard, the optimization problem is almost impossible. So we have to find a way to uh, circumvent this problem. And the way to do this is well known and is known as the homogenization method. So uh, let's start with the beginning. Uh, let us consider a very, very uh, classical shape. So our whole domain is filled with material. And we, it is well known that if you apply some loads, here it's volumic loads F, so the displacement Q of the shape is the solution of the elasticity system uh, minus divergence of A E of U equal to F. So A is the hook law and E of U is a symmetrized gradient of U. So you can solve this uh, 
PDE uh, using FreeFM++, and you obtain a small displacement rises. Now let us consider the same problem with, but with a shape made of two holes, two squared holes like this. So you can also use uh, FreeFM++ and uh, classical finite element methods to solve it, and you obtain something like this, and you can increase the number of shapes. And here, obviously, you are going to obtain something that is quite close to uh, the uh, solution of the problem for the previous slides or for some kind of composite shape. But it's going to be really difficult, you see, because you have to use a very, very fine mesh. And here it's only in 2D. So it's uh, not a problem for a small computer. Uh, but if you are going to try to do the same computation in 3D uh, for a small computer, it will not be possible. So obviously, you will be able to do it on a greater computer. But uh, if you want to even increase the number of D cells, that is the size, to decrease the size of the cells uh, of your composite, uh, at one point it will become out of reach. And this is, we have a way to circumvent this problem and to consider this uh, shape as some, to replace it by um, an isotropic. Uh, elastic shape, but uh, with a hook flow A star that is different from uh, the initial material. And as we will see, this hook flow A star, it's called the homogenized hook flow, and it could be computed uh, if you know uh, the shape of your microstructure and if you also know. Um, the shape of the microstructure, so the shape in the initial workflow. Okay, and what you can see in order to compute the displacement here, we obtain exactly the same than the one we have obtained using this fine mesh. Uh, it's quite doable, okay, because you are using only a cross mesh, so it's very fine. So this uh, ID has been applied uh, in shape optimization and it is known as the homogenization method and you obtain the optimal shape, at least what is thought to be the optimal shape. And uh, this shape is described by a set of parameters and at one point of the shape it describes a structure made of infinitely tiny holes. So if we zoom a lot, a lot, a lot, we could see some kind of microstructures here that are described by two parameters, alpha, which is the orientation of the cells, and uh, m um, set of parameters that do describe the shape of the hole in your microstructure. Okay, so next, once we have done this, uh, the problem is that the shape can obviously not be built. It's, um, uh, uh, it's ideal on the mathematical level, but on the practical point of view, uh, you cannot build the shape. So what we want now is to find a sequence, sequence of shapes, omega epsilon, that does converge toward the optimal composite. That is, when epsilon is close to zero, uh, it should behave uh, more or less as the optimal composite shape. Here, epsilon does represent uh, the scale of the smallest detail of your shape. And we can do this, and I will show you how we can compute this. Uh, when epsilon goes to zero, you obtain this sequence of shapes. So you see that for a large epsilon, it is really, really far from the optimal shape. Okay. Uh, even for certain value of epsilon large enough, if the shape is not simply connected, but it's what is not good in this case. But when epsilon goes to zero, it does converge towards the homogeneous optimal. So now I'm going to 
give you a quick overview of the dehomogenization method. And as we have seen, it is made of one plus two steps. So the first zero steps is a pre-processing step. That is, we are going to compute the hook law S star that depends on the orientation of the cells and on the parameters that do define the shape of the holes. Then we are going to apply the classical homogenization method in order to compute the optimal orientation and the optimal parameters of our structure for our optimal shape. And then final step, it's a post-processing step, and we are going to compute the sequence of shape omega epsilon that in a sense does converge to one, the composite shape. So step the, so some few words about each of the, the steps. So I have just four minutes left, so it's gonna be really quick. First step, compute uh, the homogeneous hook loop. So in essence, what we are doing, we are going to performing some virtual experiments. That is, we are considering one cell and we are putting it into compression along all each axis and to a shear stress. Then you can compute uh, the stress uh, into each cell. And from this, you can derive the homogeneous hook loop for this uh, uh, particular uh, microstructure. Uh, so we have compute A star depending on the parameter of the, of the shape of the hole, but it can also rotate, but this is not a problem. Once rotated, you have just to perform a change of variables in order to derive the hook rows of the rotated shape. Next, you solve the homogenization problem. So I will not go deep into this and I will skip to the uh, last step uh, that is uh, the computation of the dehomogenization step where we are going, uh, once we have computed the optimal homogenization shape, we are going to construct a sequence of shapes that does converge towards the optimum. Okay, so the idea is to build a set of sequence of shapes uh, big enough in order to be able to reach the optimal composite. Uh, so the simplest sequence of shapes that you can uh, uh, find is to use a periodic domain and to scale it by epsilon with epsilon going to zero and uh, well, you are going to uh, obtain a composite shape. Then what you can do also is uh, you want not necessarily uh, your final shape to be uh, isotropic. So you can change the shape of the holes depending on uh, the area of the domain uh, you are working on, so like this. So uh, here, you define a sequence of shape like the set of points of the domain that do belong to epsilon omega of x and omega is a periodic shape, but it depends on the point x of the domain that you do come to. Do. So the problem here is uh, in both cases, what would you obtain is a structural mesh Whereas you uh, uh, want to be able to change the orientation smoothly uh, through the domain. So in order to do so, the idea is to introduce what is called a green map phi here, which uh, goes from the domain uh, D into R2. And if you construct a, a periodic uh, shape, into R2, you can pull it back into the domain D using phi, and then you obtain uh, a shape, uh, a composite shape with uh, which cells do uh, change through the orientation. Okay, uh, so I will end up with some few main features. So it's a post treatment of the homogenization method, basically the aim is to uh, try to find a sh sequence of shapes that converge towards the optimal composite. 
and uh, epsilon here is the length of the smallest details. And what is important is you get one unique computation for all epsilon. So you do not have to perform a new to solve a new optimization problem for each epsilon. And finally, uh, here is a 3D example obtained by Pierre Geoffroy. So on the left hand side, you have uh, an optimal cantile 3D cantilever computed uh, using FreeFM++. And on the right hand side, you have the same cantilever obtained using a 3D printer. Thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice Congress.